Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Red River Resources. So that really flows off the tongue, Red River Resources. So this is a company I bought just based mostly off technical. So it was developing into a really nice uptrend. And I decided to just do a little bit of research to see if I could maybe transfer this company from my momentum uh, sentiment portfolio into my long-term growth portfolio. So I just wanted to see if this company has long-term potential. Uh, in my research, I did know, notice that a lot of current shareholders uh, don't have a lot of faith in management. They don't think highly of the management. So that's a big red cross to me. So I might just keep it in my um, momentum sentiment portfolio. But anyway, let's get into what Red River Resources do. So they do have operations in Thalanga, and um, that's uh, copper, lead, zinc, silver, gold. Um, they have a couple of mines, or they have one mine far west, they have another mine coming into operation soon, uh, Lion Town, if I remember correctly. They also have two other projects, a Hillgrove project near Armadale, it's in gold in Antimony. Uh, Antimony was something that interested me, I decided to do a little bit of research in Antimony, so that's something I learned from just doing this uh, video. And that project should start to go into production soonish because they did say the end of 2020 and we're almost at the end of 2020. And the Herberton projects in silver, indium, copper, lead and zinc. I won't uh, look into that all that much because they didn't really delve much into Herberton themselves. So let's look at um, their receipts because they are in production just to see how they're doing. So the main thing I look for here is any sort of uptrend in cash receipts. Uh, if you take away the last cat, last quarterly results, which they did see 35.9 in receipts and cash flow positive in operations of 12.5, very positive quarter. Uh, if you take away that, there's no discernible uptrend in cash receipts and it's very lumpy. I don't know why it goes up and down. Maybe it's based off um, prices of what they mined or it could be based off management. Um, so I did notice uh, yeah, a lot of negative uh, comments about management with this company. So based off negative management with the company and based off the lumpiness of this cash receipts, I decided that uh, this would not fit into my long-term growth portfolio because I have no confidence uh, that this sort of uh, what we had last quarter could continue moving forward. And the other thing was uh, beware of selective memory of management. Well, what do I mean by that? This is just a bit of a grab from one of their um, presentations where they took the last five quarters. I don't know why five quarters just a random number, but it, there is a reason behind that because it includes the worst three quarters they've had for quite a while and they've just uh, compared it to the most recent quarter and it looks like they're doing really well, uh, they're in a bit of an uptrend, everything's going well for the company, but uh, if you go back further in time, you can see it's very lumpy and unless they continue this sort of uh, quarter into the future, I think I should be very wary uh, about what they can do moving forward. Thalangar, so I probably spelled that wrong. Did I spell that wrong? Put an extra A there? I probably did. Thalangar. Um, yeah, so I've got an extra A there. Anyway, so Thalangar. Um, so the main thing here is Far West Mine is in production and they're looking to put another mine into production in Thalangar. That's Lion Town. So I've already mentioned there, they're mining their copper, lead, gold, uh, silver and zinc. And it looks like our operational life at least five to ten years. So uh, at least they've got this production or this these mines in 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 life for the next five to ten years. There is potential that could be extended moving forward. You always see that with mines; they've always uh, miners always extend the life of mines. Hillgrove. Uh, so the main thing here is the gold. So they do have this. This is a project they bought two years ago or in 2019 for four million dollars that seems fairly cheap to me so if you do have any ideas about whether that that seems cheap it just seems cheap to me that they've bought that for four million dollars and they're going to go into production very soon by the end of 2020 and that's the Baker's Creek stockpile and that should last about 12 months and then they've got the Mets mining center and they go into production there once the Baker's Creek stockpile runs out so this is mainly mainly to do with gold but they do have ban antimony. Now, I was fairly interested in antimony because I don't really know much about that uh, commodity. Um, it is a critical mineral, they mentioned that, and more focus on that. 
And there was some studies done that say it is a key critical menu, and I'll get into that soon. I did look at one study, and it's a world-class deposit, uh, the largest known in Australia. So I did a little bit of research on antimony, and this is my research, very basic research. So I did the, some of the prices of antimony. Uh, it's actually been in the downtrend since about 2011 or 12. Um, but that could be turning around soon, so it'd be really good for Red River resources if the share price starts turning around. Now, the British Geological Survey in 2015 put out a, a supply risk of uh, the highest supply risk of all the elements. You'll notice that antimony comes in second behind rare earth melamines, and there's that of bismuth, germanium, and vanadium. vanadium. Now, you'll notice the leading producer and top reserve holder in all these uh, elements is China, so there's some sort of connection there. Now, I'm not the biggest expert on this, what a supply risk is. And they do mention in this little study or survey that these elements, particularly the rare earth elements and antimony, have low recycling rates and a limited number of substitutes. They are almost always, also almost exclusively mined as byproduct metals. So it's something to keep an eye on, this antimony and uh, the potential moving forward. Is it fair? Is this something to get excited about? And the last project is Herbertan. Uh, they do have the highest grade known indium deposit in Australia. I should do a little bit of research on indium, so I don't know much about it, but they didn't really focus on Herbertan when in some of their presentations. So I'm not going to really look much into Herbertan for now. Um, focus mostly on Hillgrove and Fenanga as they are in production or very close to in production. So that's all I've got. Actually, now I've got a chart, sorry. Uh, I forgot about the chart. Uh, so I always look at charts for companies I own, about to own, and the main reason I bought into Red River Resources because a really good uptrend. And this could uptrend continue. It's all based off, uh, it's all, um, if it does continue, it's all to do with how management um, does in the future, how they, the company does in the next few quarters, if they can maintain what they did the previous quarter. Uh, sky's the limit for this company and maybe uh, management can redeem themselves and maybe uh, current shareholders won't look too down on uh, the management team. So that's all I've got for Red River Resources. Hope you've enjoyed this video, I've taken some away from it. Uh, I hope you've learned something. I've learned something just from doing this video of antimony. Um, I think I am pronouncing that right, antimony. Uh, anyway, so if you do have any questions, if you know a little bit more about Red River Resources, Red River, Red River even though it flows off the tongue, it's not flowing off my tongue. So if you do know a little bit more about Red River Resources than I do know, make sure you leave a comment and hopefully I can learn something from you. So the big thing I want to take away from doing videos or these videos is try to get take some knowledge away from people who listen, watch these videos, um, and if I can learn something, that'd be great. Uh, I'm not a professional advisor, so if you do need some professional advice uh, catering to your own professional financial circumstances, make sure you seek out uh, someone who is qualified. That's all for today. Bye. See ya.